Let's talk middle school books. We read a great book that's going to be awesome for those uh, those fourth graders who really love to read, the fifth graders who like to read, and those middle schoolers who just want a good book or who want to be engaged in something. It's Consider the Octopus. What we loved about it so much was this. Uh, you look at the cover and you think to yourself, it's going to be an eco book. Uh, I see all the garbage. There's probably an octopus in there who they're saving. I don't know what it's about, but it's going to make me feel bad for using plastic and being a human. But the book is not like that, and that's what's so surprising. Um, it is uh, Sydney Miller is the young girl. JB is the young boy. JB's mother works on the ship. Sydney shares the same last name as actually the same first and last name as a scientist. And what happens is JB is tasked with getting scientists on the boat for public relations purposes to say, hey, we're doing a research cruise. We have these famous scientists and let's see what they think. However, he sends the invitation to her by mistake just because he's a 12 year old kid and he doesn't do his research and hilarity ensues. And I say hilarity ensues, but in this case, it really is funny um, because Sydney then is on the boat and he realizes, oh, I've messed up, and he's trying to cover his tracks all the while she is having fun because she did not want to be spending the summer with her grandmother. So it's an eco book, yes, but the eco aspect of the book takes place as, a, as almost like a third storyline because you've got the mistaken identity and the comedy that happens in between the two of them with everything else because she's not the only person on the boat neither is he there are about six other students and they quickly figure out that there are a handful of other students that will support them in this ruse it's very entertaining and it's it's a fun book and at the end of the day kids middle grade kid middle grade readers and upper elementary school kids when they read they want to have fun the chapters are written very kind of, uh, I guess, stoically, not stoically, that's the wrong word to describe it, point of focus. Like some have JB being the focus, some have Sydney being the focus. And that really helps, it brings home a lot of the humor because it shows how the story is coming just from their perspective. And it's a hoot. It is from Nora Raleigh Baskin and Gay Polisner. And I, f I love how... Books, especially good books, can be written by two people, two different authors. It, it just fascinates me as to how they do the switch off. If there's a certain thing, like you write this person, I write that person, and we have tea every once in a while and see how it comes out. However they do it, it's a fabulous book, and we're on uh, Nora Baskin's uh, website right now. And I love reading books like Consider the Octopus because it introduces me to other books that I've heard about but never read, and Woe Be Unto Me, 9 and 10... It's it's about 10 feet in front of me in my office, and I still haven't read it. This will now motivate me to read that. I heard about Seven Clues to Home uh, last year when I was working a lot with fifth graders, and some of those guys were reading it. Let's check out Gay Palsner's website. Okay, look at that. How do they do that? I've heard about the pull of gravity. This is the great thing about books like this, Consider the Octopus. When it's an author that you otherwise haven't heard of, introduces you to their work and you're like you know what if you like the vibe of this one maybe i should try some of their other books to see if they are as entertaining if it is then that bodes well because consider the octopus is a hoot it is it's educational but it's more of an empowering education because the story is based in humor and relationships rather than guilt and for upper elementary school kids and middle school kids that is the best way to teach having said that this isn't a book whose goal whose primary goal is to teach the primary goal is just to have fun but it does so in doing a lot of education about the pacific garbage patch and different ways that scientists in real life are eliminating or hoping to eliminate a lot of the plastic ocean pollution it's a hoot and it's going to be great for ages 9 and up. And this is Trey with Daddy Mojo.